everybody, welcome back to the Anti-Social Planet, and today we're watching episode 31 of Bleach. So, we had Yamada helping them get closer to the tower where Rukia is being kept through the sewer system, because poor squad 4 needs to clean the sewers and is on sewer duty. I just feel so bad for them all the time. I feel like they literally get all the crap jobs and just I don't think they deserve it. But I also haven't met the captain and lieutenant, so like who knows what the vibe of that squad is. I don't know who to trust anymore, so but they did get closer to the city and they are super close now. They can see the tower. However, we did have Renji getting in the way of that a little bit. Uh, so he has shown up and is blocking their way, which, I mean, was inevitable. Him and Ichigo tried to kill each other last time they saw each other, so there's definitely some animosity involved, especially since Renji took Rukia, and now she's going to get executed, so Ichigo is a little bit salty about that. So we do have a fight going on, which Ichigo is doing a pretty good job at. He was holding his own, he's very confident, he feels like he can definitely do this. Uh, however, Renji has pointed out that in the human world, he is not as strong as he is at the Soul Society, which makes sense. I mean, you don't want to, like, hurt humans because even though I'm a little bit iffy on the morality around Soul Reapers in general, they're, like, ultimately not trying to hurt humanity. So, and he's causing a little bit of trouble for Ichigo. Ichigo's got another head injury boy is going through it with the head injuries. However, Ichigo seems to still be confident that he can do this, but as Renji so smartly pointed out, uh, even if they can beat him, there are still a bunch of lieutenants and captains to defeat just waiting to pick a fight with them. It's not like it's gonna be smooth sailing getting into the Soul Society, getting Rukia, getting back out. That is like, they still have to get out. Like, we have spent all this time with them just trying to get in. They have to get back out again. Anyway, and I really think that Renji is like trying to give Ichigo a reality check with their whole fight that they're having. Like, I don't think he really has that much animosity towards Ichigo. I think Ichigo definitely does, but Renji is like, this is what it's like to fight a lieutenant in the Soul Society when they have all of their power. Th this is what you were going up against. There are 11 more besides me, and captains are stronger. Like, this, this is what you are facing, and you are not ready. So we'll see how the fight actually goes. And we also have uh, Shadow and Orihime and Ishida who have sensed that Ichigo is fighting with someone and are all sort of going in that direction. So maybe Ichigo and Genji will have some backup. Maybe. If nothing else, I just want the gang back together, you know? Safety in numbers. And with that, we will get into the episode. Hi guys. Future Sarah here. I had some issues with the audio on the reaction part of this video and issues in that there isn't any audio. So as a compromise to that, instead of just having you sit in silence while I mime things, is for me to do a voiceover commentary thing and then at least you can see my first reaction and get some of my thoughts while the episode is happening. But if you don't want 
to just be here for my awkward commentary, then you can skip to the end because my audio for my final thoughts and predictions is miraculously fine. So yeah, okay. Hope you enjoy the video anyway. In three, two, one, go. Cue the part of the video where I just randomly bop out to the opener. <laughs> I was pretty excited to finally get to watch the fight between Ichigo and Renji, though. It just seemed like it was going to be one of those epic fights that people really remember, especially from this arc, and I'm so disappointed that this is like the video where I had issues because it's so good. Anyway. <laughs> I wish I knew what I was talking about, but I'm like, I don't fully remember. I usually just say whatever comes into my brain as it's happening. So this will be interesting. Ah uh, yes, we have the recap. I really hope that the recaps of these episodes don't get longer. Because if I have to go through like half an episode where it's just recap, I might lose my mind a little bit. I do have one question, because he talks about how you have- well, if you're a lieutenant or a captain, your power gets depleted, right? So is that, like, something that's just enforced by the Soul Society? Or, like, what- do you have to agree to it? I don't really understand how exactly that goes down, but- It's just interesting if it's, like, something that you have to, like, I don't know, leave some of your power behind or, like, wear something that suppresses your power. I don't really know. Oh, I remember this where I was talking about how Ichigo always manages to get hit in the head. What's up with that? He's gonna get, like too many concussions he's gonna have issues with that like as someone who has friends who are football players and hockey players and stuff i know what having too many concussions can do to you ichigo you need to like wear a helmet or something because this is like not gonna be good for you oh and i i <laughs> I said that he needed some of that, like, I don't know, the, like, tacky stuff that Ikagu had in his, like, the hilt of his sword so he can, like, fix his wounds. He should take notes from Ikagu. Renji's weapon is honestly so cool. It's probably one of my favorites at this point, and yet it's the most terrifying. I 
I don't know what I'm saying at this party there, but I'm very animated about it. <laughs> it probably has something to do with NNG having just this, like, grudge match against Ichiko, where he's like, everything that's happened is your fault. And I'm like, Rukia chose to give her powers, and you need to just accept that she makes her own decisions. I remember that the blonde lieutenant here is Gein's lieutenant. I think this is the first time we've actually, like, properly met him. Because we saw him at the ending, and we saw him, like, in the last episode, the meeting of all the lieutenants. But this is, like, the first time you really see him. What's Aizen doing? Because he had all this, like, conspiracy theory stuff going on. He was talking to Gein, and we just haven't seen him. Yeah, and Adenji, like, removed the sigil thing, which I think means that this is, like, more of a personal fight, right? Because he does see it as, like, Rukia as his friend, and... Ichigo is the person who, like, has gotten her into this mess. So, like, leaving his sigil behind feels like he's very much claiming this as, like, a personal grudge match as opposed to him doing his job as a lieutenant of one of the squads. We love Ichigo's confidence. I'm still worried about him, though. God, it still hurts. Like, I've seen this episode. And seeing his shoulders get, like, ripped apart by Renji's weapon still, ugh. It still makes me, like, tense up. They just need to realize they both want to save Rukia and they want what's best for her and team up. And we got Urahara! I so wasn't expecting to get Urahara in this episode and like, I've missed him so much. I still don't know if I trust him fully, but I miss him. This is a cool mechanic, too, where it's, like, there are patterns and limitations to the power. Like, you can predict your opponent's moves based on, like, just watching them properly. Which, I mean, Ichigo can sometimes use his head well in battle, but not always. So he's, like, big brain for this battle, which is good. sort of completely open. Oh, <laughs> uh, it... Yeah.
You did your best, Ichigo. You used your training and everything. Oh, yes, this is the point when I needed uh, Totoro to uh, comfort me. The whole half end of this episode is a lot for me. I was so upset that it cut to, like, other scenes, and I was like, no, tell me what happened to Ichigo right now. I remember at this point I was wondering if Ichigo actually dodged the attack or if Adenji might have let him dodge it, but I think probably Ichigo dodged it because Adenji seems to have some murderous intent. I actually totally forgot about that attack that Ichigo used that was like this huge crater that he made and it just like left my brain until this point. Oh, I was so not expecting them to fight but this fight is so cool and I love it. Like uh, that part where he like uses his sword as like a pivot and then kicks him. Urahara's fighting style looks so cool. I can't wait to see him, like, go all out in the future. I mean, look at that. Like, such a simple shot, 
and they don't spend a bunch of time on it, but it's so descriptive of how powerful Urahara is that, like, he can put that much strength behind an attack, and he's, like, not even breaking a sweat, whereas, like, Ichigo doing an attack even close to that powerful, like, takes so much energy for him. Like, I totally understand the idea that, like, you need to have, like, no hesitation when you're attacking someone if you want to unlock your full power because if, like, anything is making you hold back, you're not getting to that full power, right? But also, maybe we don't start killing each other. Maybe. That's so cool, though. The, like, I change. I'm pretty sure when I was watching this, I was, like, Super Saiyan was the first thing that I thought of, but, like, the whole his eyes change and then, like, all of the, like, air swelling around him. It's some intense stuff right here. Yeah, the whole, like, screaming sword thing, also kind of terrifying, but also, like, they also have spirits in them, so I guess, like, there is some kind of consciousness to the weapons, right? Ugh. This is a great foreshadowing thing, too, where it's like, this is what happens when two really powerful Soul Reapers fight each other. I also have a question, though, because if Urahara was a captain, and captain's powers get depleted when they go into the human world, is his power less than it actually would be if he was in the Soul Society? Because that's a terrifying thought when he can, like, do stuff like that with how powerful he currently is. This is when the scary Ichigo came out. I don't know if I like him when his eyes changed color. I like my sweet boy. Yeah, there's something terrifying about, like, the calmness of Ichigo when he's, like, in this mindset. 
compared to him being like angry or like fueled by emotion this is like just him like locking into that feeling of wanting to save each uh, it's wanting to save Orukia. Even now, I'm teary-eyed. You can see, like, the confusion and shock on my face. I, like, I can't even process it now. I paid no attention to this ender originally, so I'm going to pay a little bit more attention now that I'm, like, somewhat recovered. She seems cool. Is she one of the captains? I think so. Isn't she the captain that, in the opener, Shadow is fighting? Because I think so. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna take a drink. I'm gonna, I just, I just have to get up for a second, okay? I just. Okay. Okay, well, I'm just, I'm gonna, I'm gonna put Renji off to the side for a second we're just gonna we're gonna we're gonna put him over here and we're gonna focus on something else so we've had a couple of times when Urahara has shown up in like little flashes of memory we had it with Ikagu when Ichigo mentioned that he was he was trained by Urahara and we had it in one of the endings I think it was The captain for I want to say squad 12 whoever the the robot guy is in his little ender at the very like near the end of it there was like a, a, a clip of Urahara there as well so we've seen him a couple of times and I was definitely wondering where he was at because we hadn't seen him we hadn't had any flashbacks or anything yet so it was it was really nice to like get those flashbacks and like, I feel like it fits a lot better than just like having training episodes. Cause like, if you just have episodes where they're training, it's like a kind of an info dump. 
whereas like having the flashbacks is like how this specific piece of training specifically relates to the fight that Ichigo is currently in. So it, I feel like it works a little bit better. And like, it, it's not like foreshadowing things, it's like directly like giving you the information you need in the moment that you need it as like a viewer. So I did like that. I also wasn't expecting to get a Urahara versus Ichigo fight, but that was really cool. I loved it. I loved seeing some of Urahara's fighting style because last time we saw them fight was when Ichigo was just trying to like cut his hat or like knock his hat off and Urahara didn't really fight during that. Like I remember correctly he was like dodging a lot. He was just like being faster whereas like and, and like using like like simple attacks in that he was like very straightforward like going for critical hits and stuff whereas like this felt like we got to see more of like his style of fighting uh, and i always love characters whose fighting style involves a lot of like kicks and like i know like using their legs in an offensive way it just looks cool i don't know how practical it is <laughs> but it looks really cool to like watch it so loved seeing him like incorporate some of those kicks and stuff into it of course we're we're gonna have to deal with the whole Ichigo versus Renji thing like I totally get the like if you are holding back when you are fighting someone then you are never going to like reach the full potential of your power like I get that but at the same time, I need Ichigo to not be killing off characters I like. <laughs> I know that Renji was kind of going all off on him. I understand that there's some misunderstandings between the two of them because they don't fully understand each other. They don't know each other. But I need them to not kill each other. Okay? I need my boys to get along and not kill each other. And I'm, you know proud of Ichigo for mastering his power, for being able to use it when he needs to use it. That's great. I need Renji to be okay. And the crazy thing is, is like, I know, like, for the preview we're gonna get like some backstory for Renji and Urukia and like their friendship and like how they met each other and stuff, but I also know that episode 33 is a filler episode. So, are they gonna make me wait to find out what happens to Renji? Like, I'd better find out next episode. The next episode better be, I have like a clip at the end or something that's like, he woke up in squad four and he's like recovering and don't worry about it, he'll be fine. Because I don't think I can handle him not being okay. I better not have to wait like two whole episodes to find out. I'm gonna lose my mind if that's what happens. Happy place. I hope you had fun watching along with me and watching me slowly suffer. And I will see you in the next video. Bye!